Hi guys, Dr. Amy Kellum here. So today I want to talk to you about some out of the box treatments for hair loss. I've been getting a lot of questions lately uh, asking for some tools and tricks for treating hair loss in both men and women. So I'm going to go over a couple of things that you may have not heard about yet. Some of these things you can do at home, some of these things you'll have to do through a physician, um, but these are all great tools that are a little out of the box. Now, if you don't know why you're having hair loss, I would recommend talking to your doctor about the causes of hair loss because there are a lot of different causes and I'll do a separate video about causes of hair loss. That's a whole other thing. But let's say you're having hair loss. First of all, what is an in the box treatment? Oh, also, just so you know, I'm going super old school with the, uh, <laughs> with the graphics today. So sorry about that. But so in the box treatment for hair loss, I would consider minoxidil to be the most sort of in the box treatment. Uh, it's been around for a long time. This is something that you guys have seen everywhere. This is Rogaine. Rogaine comes in a couple, couple of different formulations. 5% is really what you want. There's no use going with anything less than 5%. Even if you're a woman, just go big, go big or go home when it comes to minoxidil. And some people it can cause irritation, but for the most part, it's well tolerated. Minoxidil uh, works for about 50% of people. Now, the only problem is you have to keep applying it every day, every day, every day. Once you stop a lot of times, you'll lose some of the hair that you retained from the minoxidil. But I'm still a fan, and so even though it's in the box, we'll put that on our list of options. The second thing that you can think about if you have androgenic alopecia, so again, male pattern baldness, which is most male pattern hair loss and some female pattern hair loss, is due to too much uh, or too much sensitivity to a hormone called DHT. So what are some other things we can think about that we can apply topically to block DHT? Here are some of the favorites. Sal palmetto, azelaic acid, pumpkin seed oil, and caffeine. Some of my favorite DHT blockers that you could apply topically. There are various oils, lotions, potions, things like that that you can put on your hair, on your head, um, and you'd again wanna do this probably every day, if not twice a day, to help block the hair follicles from getting too much DHT. The DHT will cause them to shift from that active growth phase into the resting or dormant or occasionally falling out stage. Um, so we really want to block DHT in specific types of patients. So something else to think about is how can we get better penetration of our various topicals? A couple of different options are out there. So you can do derma rolling if you have very short hair or no hair, but derma rollers, which are like this, which have little needles that you roll over your scalp. As you can imagine, if you have very much hair, like if I was to derma roll, it would be like all, all caught up in hair and it would all be all tangled. Um, so it can be a problem for some people who have longer hair. Um, but you can derma roll, and I would use a 0.25 millimeter depth if you're gonna do that. You can get derma rollers for about $30 on various sites online. So this is hydro needles and dermal stampers. Now mine is in a package still because it's sterile, but basically it's like a stamper. You just stamp this onto your head and it's little needles that just penetrate about 0.25, again, 0.25 or 0.5 millimeters deep. You stamp it in, it creates these little micro channels and it provides a great way to get topicals deeper into the scalp. Something else I like a lot for hair uh, or for skin, but hair specifically is this hydro needle. A hydro needle, you can get these online, um, and they come in different depths. And it comes, it's a little vial, looks like this, only it's usually empty. And you put the serum of your choice in it. And then on top of it, there are these little tiny gold needles. And what happens is, is when you put that on your skin and you push it down, the needles push down into your skin, and then the fluid goes in through the needles into your skin. So the hydro needle is a little different than dermal stamping. With dermal stamping, you create the holes using the stamper, and then you apply the, the product on topically, and it kind of goes into those holes. With the hydro needle or similar devices like this, you actually have, uh, at least in theory, the serum going in through the needles into the holes as you're creating those holes. So again, I like this one in a 0.25 to 0.5 for hair restoration, and you can get those online for pretty cheap. Something else that may not be 
out of the box, but is worth mentioning, is making sure that you have good nutrition. And I won't go into diet so much right now, but there are some supplements like Nutrafol, which is my favorite line currently. There's the address if you wanna buy it. Um, Nutrafol has a male line, a female line, and they have a lot of different vitamins in there. They also have some adaptogens to help with stress. And I think these can be really helpful in both men and women as an adjunctive treatment, so an additional treatment. These are pills, vitamins that you would take every day. Low level light therapy. Now, what you can't see is that my phone is actually resting on an entire tower of red light therapy caps. And I'm gonna show you because I think it's pretty cool. So these are all my red light therapy caps that I give to patients when I'm doing any kind of hair procedure on them or if they just want to buy a red light therapy cap. So I really believe in red light therapy, also called low level light therapy, also called low level laser therapy. Essentially you have a cap of some sort with a bunch of little lights, either LED lights or laser lights. Laser lights are better, but they're more expensive. You're looking for red and near infrared light and you usually wear these caps for about 20 to 30 minutes several times a week. And these caps can actually increase the energy production of the mitochondria, which are like the, you know, the engines of your cells. So you have better energy output in your cells and it can stimulate follicle growth and help keep your hair healthier and also grow new hair. So big fan of red light therapy or low level light therapy. And there are various brands out there that I don't represent, but that have good devices. They're usually at least $500. If it's less than $500, you're probably not getting a good quality product. Now moving into things that require a prescription, but are still pretty cool. So you have to reach out to your doctor. One of my favorites, or two of my favorites, are products called 82M and 82F by a, um, a pharmacy called Master Farm. This is the website, hairsciencecorp.com. So the first one, 82M, is a compounded product for androgenic alopecia, um, although this also could be used for women as well. But basically it has minoxidil in it. It also has a steroid, a little bit of steroid to help with inflammation at the hair follicle. And it also has oleanic acid, which is gonna be a 5-alpha reductase blocker to help a little bit with preventing formation of DHT. So 82M is one option. I also like 82F. 82F is specifically for androgenic alopecia. This is gonna be for, again, for men with male pattern baldness or for women who have had diagnosed androgenic alopecia. The F stands for finasteride. So this is a topical finasteride plus minoxidil product. And what I love about that is that you can get the benefits of finasteride without having to take systemic finasteride. I didn't talk about finasteride earlier, but finasteride or Propecia is the most commonly used drug for male pattern baldness out there. And it can be really helpful, but it also can have some pretty devastating side effects in some people. I won't talk about finasteride too much, but you can take it topically in something like 82F and have the benefits of the hair follicle without having all the systemic side effects that can go along with that. So those are fun products. Um, these are not inexpensive. These will generally run you 100, 150 or more per month. So keep that in mind, but they are very effective. Something else I've discovered recently is the Antiage hair system. Uh, I'm not um, associated with this company, except that we use their products here in my office, but this is something that you would get through a position. It comes in a little box like this, and what it includes is two different topicals and a thermal stamper. And what's, what's great about these topicals, the, this one here is a stem cell culture media topical. So it's actually made from bone marrow stem cells that are grown out in culture and then they collect the growth factors um, which have been shown to be helpful for stimulating the hair follicles. So basically what you do is you do this dermal stamper first, and then you apply a few drops of this, and you do that twice a week. And then they also have a botanical blend, which is just like 20 something different botanicals that you apply topically about three days a week. I like this package because it gives you all the tools that you need in one little box. And here is the information. Woo! There's the website, but you do have to have a physician to order this, I think, this time. Finally, for those of you who have a physician or are not opposed to visiting a physician's office, 
you can do in-office procedures with things like PRP, exosomes, and stem cells. PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. This has been around for about three decades. And basically we just take some blood from you, we spin it, we get the growth factors from your blood, and then we can either inject those into your scalp or we can use the micro and microneedling device to get those into your scalp. And usually you wanna do at least three treatments spaced out four to six weeks in between to have the best result. The exosomes, are a newer treatment modality as well as the stem cells and these things are still kind of on the investigation stage although a lot of physicians are already doing these because they seem very safe but essentially with these therapies we're using either stem cells themselves or these little growth factors that are coming from stem cells in the form of exosomes to stimulate your follicle to grow and to be healthier so that could be a whole other talk as well, but you should know about these therapies because they're out there and they can be really effective for people who don't want to do a hair transplant, um, but have already tried some of the other things and maybe want to add some superpower to that. I think that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching my out of the box treatments for hair loss for both men and women. You guys have an awesome day and I wish you an abundant amount of hair. <laughs> Bye.